chemistry we're moving on to lesson two in our in the acid bases unit this deals with a little uh, deeper look into the difference between strong and weak acids as well as strong and weak bases so let's look at how a strong acid HCl hydrochloric acid is created all acids are made from nonmetals. for this reason they're bonded by covalent bonds Fluorine with seven valence electrons is joined by hydrogen with one valence electron. So that forms a covalent bond. Both atoms fulfill the octet rule and, a co and create a covalent bond. So this forms hydrochloric acid. We now have a strong acid that will react with water. So there you have the hydrochloric acid. Over on the right is the water molecule. Uh, rather than putting uh, the, the H pluses represent protons. So those are actually intact hydrogen atoms. There's a proton and one of the electrons that it's sharing with the oxygen in each case is uh, belongs to that hydrogen. So it's a proton and an electron. So those are completely intact hydrogen atoms that are covalently bonded. Acids are divided into strong acids and weak acids. A strong acid is one in which all of the H plus hydronium ion uh, or protons break away from every acid molecule. So when you have a strong acid such as hydrochloric acid, then every time you put one of those in water, that proton on the HCl is going to break away and move over to the water molecule and leave its electron behind on the chlorine. A weak acid is one in which only some, not all, of the H plus protons break away from every acid molecule. And you don't see one of those uh, in this example, but that would be uh, an example would be vinegar, uh, which is acetic acid. It has a hydrogen which only occasionally in water will break away and move over to the water molecule. When a proton H plus breaks away from its acid, it is said to dissociate. Dissociation occurs because the hydronium, the H plus proton on the HCl is more attracted to one of the lone pairs of electrons on the water molecule than it is to its own molecule, to the chlorine uh, atom and, and the, its own molecule there. So hydrochloric acid, HCl is a strong acid. All HCl molecules in an aqueous water solution will donate their protons to a water molecule and there it goes now one question you can ask is when that proton jumps over there it's attached to the lone pair does that become a covalent bond because the other two hydrogens on that water molecule are covalently bonded so is it a covalent bond or is it simply an intermolecular force and I've heard I've read different answers to that but my belief is it is only an intermolecular force holding that third H plus onto the water molecule. It can easily break away from the water molecule and go to some other base that will attract it. So that third H plus is really just uh, held there by an intermolecular force, not by an actual covalent bond as the first two are. But it's still considered to be an H3O uh, ion or molecule. So there's the hydronium ion can be written either H plus that's just the proton or H3O plus that's the entire water molecule with the proton but in chemistry they're treated as being exactly the same thing even though they don't look like they're the same thing. The dissociated hydrogen leaves its electron behind so there was the electron that at one time belonged to that uh, hydrogen atom. The chloride ion Cl minus remains in solution. An acid produces a broken hydrogen atom. So that's in a in simple um, parlance. That's what uh, that's what a that's what an acid is. It breaks a hydrogen atom in two. Okay, a Bronsted-Lowry base accepts the H plus hydronium ion released by the acid. In this example, water acts as a base by accepting the H plus ion donated by HCl. 
So again, we're using the Bronsted-Lowry definition. HCl is an acid because it donates a proton. That would actually fit the definition of both Bronsted-Lowry and Arrhenius. The water acts as a Bronsted-Lowry base. That's only the Bronsted-Lowry definition because it accepted the hydronium ion. The proton attached to the water molecule produces a positively charged hydronium ion, H3O+. An H plus ion is the same as an H3O plus ion. Both are called hydronium ions because the proton immediately attaches to the water molecule. It doesn't just swim around in the solution by itself. So it immediately, you can really think of that water molecule as being right next to the hydrochloric acid. <clears throat> it's not across the beaker or some other place. It's right next to the hydrochloric acid. And so that proton just basically very slightly moved over to the water molecule to be on the water molecule. So there's the hydronium and we move on. So when the H plus proton is pulled away from the, the hydrochloric acid, leaving the Cl minus behind, it immediately attaches to the H2O. So the H plus and H3O plus are referred to as hydronium ions. There you go. Those are both the same. The AP standards prefer this uh, symbol for hydronium. A strong acid is one in which all of the H plus protons dissociate from the acid. There are seven strong acids. You should memorize these. In this class, you don't need to memorize them. In AP, they do need to memorize them. And the reason you memorize the seven strong acids is there are tens and tens, perhaps hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of acids. And only seven of them are, seven of them are strong acids, will completely dissociate 100% in water. All the rest are weak acids. So if you know the seven strong acids and you see an acid that's not one of those seven strong acids, you know it's a weak acid. So here they are, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid, uh, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, perchloric acid, and chloric acid. Some textbooks, I, I refer to three textbooks, two of them consider chloric acid to be strong, one of them does not, they don't consider it to be it, so they will say that there's six strong acids, but we say there's seven here. So all strong acids completely dissociate in water. That hydrogen will, uh, proton will always come off and jump over to a water molecule. All other acids are weak acids and do not completely dissociate in water. There are several other ways, really another way, uh, that acids can be classified. So here's the seven strong acids again, same list. So the first three are called binary acids. They have a hydrogen attached to a single element. And if you look at your periodic table, all three of those elements are in the second to last column on the periodic table. That's chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Those are the, that's the halogen group. And so those are called binary. Binary means two. It's a hydrogen and one other element. So those are binary acids. And then the last four are called oxy acids for an obvious reason. They all have oxygen atoms um, in them. So acids with uh, the hydrogen attached to an oxygen compound are called oxy acids. Acids with more than one hydrogen, such as H2SO4, are called polyprotic acid. Polyprotic means many protons. And the reason is, if you look at um, if you look at sulfuric acid, it has two hydrogens, not just one. So one of those hydrogens will always break away, and that will make it a strong acid, sulfuric acid. Um, the other one will not. So we'll talk about that uh, on the next slide actually in a few slides. So strong acids completely dissociate in water. This means that every strong acid molecule that enters the water will give a proton to a water molecule. So there goes a hydrochloric acid. And once it's in the water, the hydrochloric acid is a strong binary acid, HCl. So it's going to donate its proton. I'm going to run through all seven of these quickly, but the idea is just the repetition of this is just to get you to see what's happening with an acid visually. So watch the uh, animations there so you see what's happening with, that, with those protons.
So all HCl molecules donate a proton to a water molecule. We'll go quickly through the rest of them. There's hydroiodic acid. Hydroiodic acid is a strong binary acid, HI. There goes the proton over to the water molecule, leaving its electron behind. All HI molecules donate a proton to a water molecule. There's hydrobromic acid, HBr. There goes the proton over to the water molecule, creating a Br minus ion and an H3O plus hydronium ion over on the right. All HBr molecules donate a proton to a water molecule. There is nitric acid, HNO3, there goes the proton over to the water molecule, and all HNO3 molecules donate a proton. Here is sulfuric acid, it goes in. Now the first proton is going to be a strong acid, it's 100% of the time going to jump to a water molecule, like that. So all H2SO4 molecules donate a proton. Now there's what's left over. So sulfuric acid is a strong oxy acid. So when the first proton H plus dissociates, the resulting compound is hydrogen sulfate, which is a weak acid. So the second proton will dissociate sometimes. Of course, that's a different water molecule. Remember, there's a whole lot of water molecules in this solution compared to the number of acid molecules. So it jumps over to a different water molecule, but it only does it sometimes. The second dissociation produces the sulfate ion SO4 2 minus. So that's, you know, we've talked about these molecular ions like SO4 sulfate. This is where they generally come from. Phosphate, sulfate, nitrate, they come from dissociated acid molecules where the hydrogen has left and therefore it's left behind a, um, a molecular ion with a in this case a two plus charge because it lost two protons left two electrons behind so that's where those molecular ions come from dissociated acids okay here's perchloric acid same thing all of them dissociate and finally chloric acid which we said some books don't consider it a strong acid we won't get into the details of why that is but there it is and so it's going to dissociate and form hydronium ions also so remember the definition of an acid is it forms h3o plus ions hydronium ions in a water solution Strong bases. So a little, let's touch on strong bases. Strong bases are bases that completely dissociate in the same way as strong acids. Here is a list of strong bases. So lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, cesium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. Notice those last three are in the second column, calcium, strontium, and barium. So they have two plus charges, therefore they need two hydroxides with one minus charges to pair up. So those are the strong bases. And you notice what they all have in common. They all have OHs. And that fits the Arrhenius definition of a base. That a base must carry along its own OH and it simply dissolves and releases that OH into the solution. And OH is what makes a, a, a solution basic, is to have an OH. So there they are on the periodic table, the first element in each of those. So you see they kind of form the letter B. So they all contain hydroxide ions. They contain alkali or alkaline earth metals. Those are the first two columns of the periodic table. They dissociate 100% like strong acids. So you notice the shape of those letters kind of forms the letter B. So you can remember the strong bases, just like strong acids. If you're going to seriously study acids and bases, you have to have those memorized. Um, because any other base you would see, such as ammonia, for example, would be a weak base. It would only sometimes attract or produce a hydronium ion. Okay, so Ka versus Ka is the intrinsic strength of an acid. If I take equal quantities 
of hydrochloric acid and ammonia and uh, excuse me uh, ac acetic acid which is vinegar then the hydrochloric acid will 100% of the time dissociate the acetic acid will only sometimes dissociate so if if you took equal amounts the hydrochloric acid would produce more hydronium ions in the solution than the acetic acid so that's what ka is it says if you took equal amounts compared them equally then the ka tells you which one is intrinsically the stronger ph value is the acidity of the solution and it's a function of two things it's how many hydronium ions the solution the aqueous solution the water solution has and it's a function of two things one is the ka value how strong is the acid but also think about what else could make the more hydronium ions in the solution is by putting more of the acid in the solution. So if you use a lot of a weak acid and just a little bit of a strong acid, you can end up with more hydronium ions, H3O plus, in the solution than with the strong acid. So here's a little metaphor I use for that. <clears throat> a sixth grader can lift five skateboards on up onto a shelf. A twelfth grader can lift ten skateboards up onto a shelf. So you would say that the 12th grader is intrinsically stronger. One 12th grader versus one 6th grader. The 12th grader is stronger, can lift more skateboards. So these represent the intrinsic strength of a 6th grader and a 12th grader. This is comparable to Ka value of an acid. It compares equal amounts. But then you ask the question, which can lift more skateboards, 6th graders or 12th graders? Now you need to know how many 6th graders and how many 12th graders. So if we have 18 6th graders, they will be able to place more skateboards onto the shelf than two 12th graders. Even though the 12th graders are intrinsically stronger, you have a whole lot of 6th graders that can be lifting skateboards and therefore they're going to be able to put more skateboards uh, up than the two 12th graders. So this represents how pH works. pH depends both on the intrinsic strength of the acid, the Ka, and the amount of acid measured in molar concentration, M. So how acidic a solution is depends not only on how intrinsically strong the acid is, but how much of it you use. You can produce a more acidic solution, more H3O plus ions in a solution by using a whole lot of a weak acid than you can if you used only a small amount of a strong acid. So what determines the acidity of a solution? The acidity of a solution is determined by the concentration of hydronium ions, H3O+, and how much there are per liter. That's molarity. It's the concentration of the solute, the acid, or the hydronium ions per liter of solution. So that's molarity. So this is less acidic than the one on the right. The one on the right has more hydronium ions. We don't know whether it has more because we used a really strong acid or because we used a lot of a really weak acid, but whatever the case is, you end up with more hydronium ions on the right than on the left, and so that's said to be a more acidic solution. And that takes care of this lesson on um, acids and bases, strong and weak acids and bases. Uh, in the next lesson, we'll get into the pH scale and how that works.